Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to take a look at the website service that's built into OS X Server. Now the beauty of hosting uh, your own website is that it allows you to have the opportunity to host the website yourself, not have to pay for hosting fees, and be able to manage it all by yourself. So let me just kind of walk you through this, but before I do that, let me just give you a few cautions if you are going to host your own website, because there's a few things that you do need to consider. Uh, the first thing you need to consider is downtime, and that's a really important thing. If you are hosting a website uh, on your own home server, and your website goes down, and your server goes down for some reason, maybe you have a power outage, or uh, you forget and you turn your computer off when you go out of town, well, that means your website goes down as well. And so that can cause you problems because if you're relying on that website, people won't be able to access it. So you need to consider downtime. The other thing is if you're hosting a home server, you want to ask uh, your ISP, does your ISP block ports 80 and 443? Uh, in some cases, ISPs do not want you to host your own website, so they will go and block those ports. And if they do that, then you will have no access uh, to be able to host your server because no one will be able to get to your server from the outside and nobody, therefore, will be able to get to your website. And so that's going to cause you some problems if those two ports are blocked. Again, port 80 is for a regular website, and port 443 is for a secure website. And so if those things are blocked, you need to find that out, or your website won't function. Uh, and then finally is, uh, you know, do you, have, um, do you have a static IP or not? Uh, if you've got a dynamic IP, that means your IP address will change from time to time, and that means in the time that your uh, IP changes before that and you catch up on your domain provider to get that fixed, your website may not show up anymore. Well, actually, it won't show up anymore until you make that change. And so having a static IP is something that you really should consider if you're going to host your own website. Uh, so that those are some things that you want to think about and consider if you're going to host your own website. Otherwise, if you're a home user and you really rely on your website, you may want to have that hosted with an outside provider. Or you could have your, um, you know, your Mac Mini or something hosted at a place like Mac Stadium or one of those places that hosts those for you where the service is always on and they take care of all those details for you. Then it would really make sense to run your own website there instead of paying hosting fees. So hopefully that gives you an idea of uh, just some things to consider when you're looking at hosting websites. Okay, so here we are back over on the website service, and this is uh, the interface right here to get us started. Again, you notice it's off, so we don't have the service up and running yet. Uh, so let's go ahead and walk through the different features and help you get your website up and running. Uh, the first thing here is uh, on all the services, as you know, we have the status and permissions, as we always show. Uh, you have the option to edit uh, the permissions to allow connections from all networks, private networks, or only some networks. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to leave it uh, for all networks, but if you wanted to fine-tune that in terms of permission uh, to have access and all of that, you can start doing that right in here. Uh, now down below we've got just a few things here. You notice we have this web applications area here where we can enable PHP or enable Python. Now if you're developing web uh, sites that have PHP or Python in the background, this would be usually for dynamic type of websites where you need uh, that type of scripting and, and such to allow things to happen on your website, then you'll want to check those boxes to enable uh, those, uh, both of those uh, plugins to allow that type of stuff to happen. So uh, if you don't know what this is, then odds are you probably don't have it on your website uh, because you would be, uh, again, developing dynamic things with your website. Uh, but they've brought those right out here front and center for you to check off. Now down here are where your websites are stored, and you'll notice that right away we've got the server website where it has all IP addresses on port 80, and it has the SSL version on port 443. Now those are the two ports that are used uh, by the website service. And so now these are your built-in websites, and so you don't want to change these or, uh, or mess with these at all or override them because these are integral to a whole bunch of different services on OS X Server. Uh, they work with things like Profile Manager and a few of the other things, so you don't want to change these. Uh, but let me just go ahead and show you what it looks like. I'm going to go ahead and hit the Edit here. And this is the interface here for the website service. Now you'll notice that we've got uh, a uh, kind of a, a key here that tells us where the websites are stored. It's in the library server web data sites default. And that's where the default website is stored is right in there. 
and you can see that matches what we have right here, right? Store, store site files in default area. If I just click on this, I have the option to select other if I wanted to. Now again, with the default website, I'd leave this alone. Don't move it around. Don't change it. Uh, but just wanted to show you that that's there. If you wanted to see where that was exactly, you could click on this little arrow and it'll bring up a finder to show you where that's located. And you can see here, here are all of the default uh, files and, and such that are put in here for the server website itself. Okay, and it follows that same path that it shows there on the top of the screen. Let me just go ahead and close this down. Now right here we've got who can access it. We've got anyone in this case. Now I can limit that to a specific group or limit access by uh, folder. That's all the way down to the folders within the website. Uh, in this case I'm going to leave it on anybody but again if I wanted to spe specify a group I could do that and then put in an access group here. Uh, again I'm going to leave that alone but wanted to show you that that's possible. Now I can add additional domains uh, if I have other domains configured and so if I wanted to add alternative domain names for this website again these are almost like uh, you know different names that would get me there and so maybe it's uh, you know server.toddoltoff.com maybe I want a uh, home uh, .server.toddoltoff.com or whatever I could configure a few of those additional domain names here for this site. I'm just going to cancel that because i leave that alone. Uh, now redirects. If I want to do that I can redirect to a particular website. You'll notice here it's got a built-in redirect for this website going also to HTTPS as well and so that's the uh, 443 rep website, the secure one. So it'll go to either one if I want. I can add other redirects if I want to. Those are basically forwarding UR, uh, to URLs uh, on other websites and just clicking the plus there would allow me to put in this information. Let's go ahead and cancel that. I can also set up aliases. Uh, again, if there's a different, um, uh, you know, aliases again, like they say, make folders uh, on the server publicly accessible uh, via URL. So I can put in that information there to have it go to certain folders that I might have set up as well, which might have other websites or subsites or uh, that sort of thing. Uh, I'm not going to do that. And then I have index files. If I just hit edit here, you can see I've got the index HTML, PHP, and default HTML that are in there. And I can add other files in here as well as my index files. Now, you want to make sure that you've got an index.html file whenever you're making your website. And I'm going to show you how to do that in a minute, but just wanted to point that out. Uh, again, I'm just going to cancel. And then I've got advanced settings. If I just click on this, I can enable uh, server-side includes. I can do overrides for HT access files. That's if you've got secure parts of your website where maybe you have people have to have a login to get in. Uh, if you're using any HT access files in your website, you'll want to check that so that it looks for those things and requires those logins to get in. And then you have other things, folder listing and, and all that sort of thing. And then you can also have um, these uh, web apps available, the Python Hello World. Uh, again, if you're using Python, you'll know what that's all about. If you don't, then don't worry about messing with that. Just use the default site. So I'm just going to go ahead and cancel. So that gives you an idea of how this default site is uh, set up. And if I just say cancel here and go back to normal, uh, the same is true here for this SSL website. And so we can go ahead and use that to set everything up. Okay, now that we've got that going, let's go ahead and throw the switch to start the service. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit that there. You can see it's starting the service right now, and we're going to wait until it gets set up here. Got a green light over here, and now you can see that it's available on, and notice it says the local network here. Um, this just takes a little bit of time to update because the reachability service has to test it to see if it's uh, accessible on the outside. And so it'll take a little bit for that to change over to whatever your domain is and what you have set up. Now you'll notice here I've got these uh, website uh, access here. Uh, all I've got to do is hit this. You can see that one's just come live. It's going ahead and figuring out whether those are live or not by testing the service. And you'll see these uh, dots come on here as it works on the ports. And all I need to do to test the site is just go ahead and hit these little buttons right here. It'll pull up a website and load uh, my server site. Now this is the default site here. As you can see, it's got uh, access to Profile Manager, the Wiki, once we get those set up, uh, Xcode if you're using that, or your settings where you can change your password or customize your settings for the account. And you can see it's my secured site. That's the one I clicked on. You can see it gave me access to that, and that's how that works. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, put this down here for a minute and come back in here. So that's what it looks like to get the site uh, set up and running.
Now let's assume for a second that you want to add your own website on top of it. And so you want to have uh, a separate website, not just the server website is the only thing that's accessible. And so in order to do that, we need to do a couple of things. So the first thing we're going to do is go over into DNS here. And what we're going to do is we're going to need to add some DNS for our web server. And so let's say that I want to do a, a you know a completely different subdomain. I want to do uh, something like cloud.server.toddoltuff.com. Let's just say I want to do something like that. So what I would do is come in here and I'm going to add a new primary zone in this case. All right, I'm just going to add that in there. Now I don't have to. I mean I could I could add it as a subdomain, but let me just show you how this works with a uh, with a primary zone to set that up. So I'm just going to add that. And this is again for those of you that might want to use different subdomains. Maybe you've got more than one registered uh, website. In my case I don't. I don't have one to show you so I'm just going to do it this way. Uh, but let's just say this is how we want to do it. And so you can see here I've got to put in my new primary zone. In my case uh, I'm just going to put uh, cloud.server.toddletoff.com uh, just for the sake of what we're doing here. And I'm going to leave that alone. Okay, I don't need any of this other information. I'm just going to say create and let it set it up. And you can see I've got now I've got this new zone here. I don't have any files in there yet, but I've got this new zone. Now what I'm going to do is add an A record. Okay, I'm going to add a machine record for my website. And you can see it's already in that zone. If I wanted to use my other zone, I could do that as well. But for our purposes, we're just going to do this. And I'm going to put in www. Notice how what it does to the top. It puts the www in front of that and gets me all set up. Now for IP addresses, I'm just going to add my regular local IP that I've got right now that I've got set up for the server. And so that's added. And we're going to say create. And so now it's going to add that A record. And you can see now I've got my A record and NS record set up. And it's created this reverse zone for me over here as well. Oops, right there for my, uh, my new setup. Okay, so now I've got my DNS ready to go for that particular uh, website there, right, the www. So now we can come back into the website service, and let's go ahead and set up our new website. So I'm just going to click a plus here to add a whole new domain. And what we're going to do is put in the website for our domain here. So we're just going to put in www.cloud.server.toddoltoff.com. Okay, we're just going to put that in there. Now I can set up the IP address. I can set up uh, any or this or or my server's one. I'm just going to leave it at any, and I can set up the port whether I want it to be uh, you know secure or not. And I can secure it with an SSL certificate if I want to make it a secure website. In this case, I'm just going to leave it open to everybody. Now I want you to notice up top here how it has put in now under the sites area. It's going to create a folder there for my new website, and I'll show you what that looks like. Now, right here where it says to store sites, I can have it automatically create a folder right here, or I can say other and point it to a different folder if I want to do that. Maybe I've got my website somewhere else on a drive or whatever, I can set it up that way. I'm going to let it just create one for me here. Again, I, there's nothing to do with who can access it or not, okay, because I've got this open. I don't have to worry about that. And you notice here I've got three index files uh, configured, and it configures these by default. And I'm going to show you what that looks like in a minute when we set this up. So I don't have any other fancy things on my site, so I'm just going to say create. And so it's going to create this website for me. And it's going to take a little bit to add that in there. It's going to create the folders and all that good stuff for me. And there it is. You can see I've got my uh, website right here. You can see it's all set. And let me just edit it for a second because I want to show you what it looks like to edit it. And you'll notice now I've got this set up. It doesn't yet know if it's available on my local network. It hasn't done that test yet. We'll have to wait for that to happen. And you can see where it's storing the files for me right here. Now, let me just check this. Notice a little uh, marker right here. If I just click on that, what it's going to do is take me in over here and show me this folder that was set up for that website. You can see there's the default and there's my folder. And it by default, it drops all of these different files in here. Now, I don't need these files. So I'm going to come in here and just delete all of them. I'm just going to trash them. Now it's going to ask me to authenticate, so let me do that real quick. Okay, and then I'm just going to hit OK. And now it's empty, and this is what I want. I want this empty because what I'm going to do is add my own file to it. Now, you let me just drag this file in here. This is an index.html file. Let me authenticate again. And I'm going to say OK. 
Now you want to make sure you have an index.html file for your website because that's what Apache is going to look for. So you want to make sure that that's in there and all set and ready to go. And so we're ready here. Let me just go ahead and close this. And I'm going to say OK to let that go. Now what we're going to do is let's go ahead and test this out. So I'm just going to pull up my browser again here. And what we're going to do is we're going to put that information in here. I'm just going to say www.cloud.server.toddletoff.com. And we're going to go ahead and hit Enter. And there it is. There's my HTML file. This is what I created. That was what was on that file. This is my website. Can you see it OK? So we know the website works and everything is good. All right. So that gives a good test for me to know if it's accessible. Uh, let me just pop this down. Now, what you're going to want to do is make sure that externally you create um, a, a record at your domain provider for this particular uh, website there so that it can be accessed outside of your network. Notice here that it doesn't have the green dot. I can't be, it's not accessible on the outside of the network. That's why the test isn't working. Um, but that's how that works. Notice they're both hosted on, on port 80. And so what will happen is the server will sort that for you when it comes in through those ports. So that gives you an idea of how the website service works. Uh, again, this is integral in some of the other services like Profile Manager that we'll see in a coming screencast and as well as the wiki. Uh, but I wanted to show you how to get this up and running. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.